Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Adam. Do you ever need an incentive to get good grades? And no, I personally cannot pay you to get A's. I'm sorry. In this project, we're going to build a robot that is a grade incentive, a celebration robot. Let's get started. I'm in school for engineering. And sometimes I take some pretty challenging courses. So it can be a lot sometimes. And I was thinking, if I can have some kind of incentive, maybe I can boost my grades? That may be too much to ask, I understand. <laughs> so I'm going to design a robot that can access my grades via my school's online gradebook. Then it's going to maybe pull a party popper and play some music from a speaker. But then I thought, that's really not enough. <laughs> and I kind of came to mind, I saw this online. I was like, oh, I remember the 20 or, you know, the 30 foot inflatable dancing dudes that are usually in front of like car dealerships. But then I found that a miniature version for a tabletop. And I was like, this is excellent. I want to include this in a project. So I'm going to incorporate in this project. So I'm going to have something access my, my online gradebook so that whenever I get a new grade of an A, I'm going to have it play some celebration music and um, maybe turn a motor or something to pull a party popper or a, you know, like a mini confetti cannon. And then I'm gonna make the little inflatable wavy dude dance. And I think this is gonna be a pretty good incentive for me to get good grades. For the design of the project, I decided to use a pretty high torque servo, which will pull the party popper. Again, you kind of see this in my design here. The party popper is going to go in here and the string, which will come down here, will be tied uh, to the servo, to the servo arm. And not a lot of force is required to pull the popper, so just a standard size servo should be fine. And for the general like brains of this project, I'm going to go with an Arduino MKR0. This is because the included SD card slot is very nice. <laughs> However, in the future, I really, um, I, I might want to switch to like a web controlled microcontroller so I can send the commands over just over the internet instead of serial. Um, so that because it's kind of limiting me, so I have to have it plugged into my computer at all times. Online might be nice next time. On the Arduino, I'm going to use an audio amplifier for the speaker, um, which is going to let me turn up and down the volume. And I'm also, you know, we're, we're doing the, the uh, tabletop inflatable instead of like the 20 foot tall ones or whatever they are. And I'm going to control that with a MOSFET. And the reason of this is um, my biggest complaint of this product is that it just like will stand up and stay there sometimes. And that kind of defeats the purpose, I think, of kind of the dancing um, inflatable that's usually dancing because, you know, like the wind's pushing on it. So we're going to simulate that for this project by using a MOSFET to turn the, uh, turn, turn the inflatable guy on and off, turn his fan on and off uh, continually, which is just going to make him flop up and down and up and down, which is kind of exactly what we want. And you see that here. So we have, um, he's going to go in here. This is a big, um, big hole for just his, uh, his fan to get the air and, uh, wires will come out there and then we have our servo spot and the party popper will go up there. And it, this is really not a very complex, um, like design wise project. So I, I kind of, I like how simple it is, honestly, <laughs> but yeah, the basics of this project is if I get an A on an assignment, a, uh, the party popper will go off by being pulled by that servo. The celebration music will play from the Arduino. And then lastly, the inflatable will dance. And that, that's pretty much it. I'm kind of, I'm excited for this. Yeah. Do you like free stuff? You can join the Road Test program. You can get free dev kits, test equipment, and even online training courses. In exchange for a detailed review, join our Road Test program. Learn more at the link below. Ah, free stuff? I'm gonna go over the basics of my code that I wrote for this project, especially the Python portion and getting this API to work. <laughs> but um, generally, so I, I got this started with, I found the Arduino port, we're kind of ignoring that, but I have lots of methods that I'm just gonna kind of put away right now. Um, this is kind of what I do, is I call my assignments and submissions API. Um, like I discussed earlier, they the Canvas API is a very, it's very frustrating. <laughs> it's, it, it, I wish I had the, um, some of the administrative privileges but I obviously can't because I'm a student. So I'm getting around again, getting my grades by basically getting the submissions and getting my assignments, which I'm calling with the respected API commands or calls. For my school, we have a particular Canvas uh, URL. However, this, if you have a different Canvas homepage, like most of them have different school Canvas links, uh, the same API calls should work, which is good. So I basically throw them into a list and I'm kind of getting around a lot of the nitty gritty stuff, but I'm I, essentially I'm going through getting all the scores, 
getting all the assignment numbers for each one so I can compare. And then I go through and make sure all the assignments are valid basically, because sometimes the Canvas API is very, um, again, it's frustrating. <laughs> it is not very consistent. So um, I, I have to double check that it's been, been working properly. Like sometimes I'll have a submission for an assignment, but I won't have the assignment ID. And sometimes I'll have a submission, but I won't have the, um, the actual like grade point value from the other call, which is really frustrating. So I'm kind of having, I'm having to like hope for the grades that, that work. So some classes work for me, some classes don't, which is frustrating, but um, it, it, it does generally work, which I'm happy about. So I basically make sure that each um, grade has an assignment ID I go through and get each assignment value so I can actually calculate the grade myself, which is what I do down here. So I go for each assignment value, I uh, make a new list basically, and I or make a new list for grades. And I calculate if it's an A, B, C, even though we don't really need that. We only really need A for this assignment, or for this, um, not assignment, sorry, for this project. But I, I just threw it on there for fun. And I did have to kind of get around doing a math no-no by, by basically saying if the submission is not zero, then we'll do this because sometimes, or sorry, not the submission, the assignment, because some of the assignments, if I wasn't able to find the, um, the ID up here, I just arbitrarily said the assignment is zero. I basically said only calculate the ones that aren't zero. So up here, if I basically said um, divide whatever point value by zero, it would flag an error, which is why we have to kind of get around it with doing that. And then I call my get missing assignments down here, which is another function. And that, that goes through kind of my CSV file, which is how I'm storing everything. So again, my general format for this is I'm going to have my computer run this probably every hour, every couple hours. And it really only needs access to this one file and my CSV. This CSV has a list of all the assignments that have been graded in the past. And those are the assignment IDs for me. Doing that, I can compare those assignment IDs to the ones that I grabbed from the API calls. And if, they, um, if there are any assignments that are not in the CSV, it returns them, which is nice. So then after all that, I basically get those assignments. I call another function, which is basically checking if that missing assignment is an A, because we don't care about if I got a grade of a C. <laughs> we, only, we only care if I got a grade of an A. So um, doing that, we, we, we double check that the new grade that we just got was an A. And if it's an A, it'll return true. And using that, we're like, awesome, I got an A. Then we want to call the Arduino. So I update the CSV file so it has all the grades that have been posted, I guess. And then I send it over zero, which is my other function to call the Arduino. And that's basically what I do. Um, and it does work, <laughs> and I'll show you. So I, I had found my Arduino on the port, which is what I did up there. Um, I didn't want to have to type in my port every time because that'd be frustrating. So I basically have it said, if it finds an Arduino on the port list, it's going to be that Arduino. Um, so then it says, oh, you got all the grades. So that's basically me just saying it's checked and there's no new assignment. So nothing, nothing is done here. However, let me go in, let me go in and say this assignment was not graded. So I just deleted that assignment. Um, let's call it again or start the program again. Yep, false. So that all that is saying is that um, I did get something graded, but it's not an A. And you may notice that, hey, uh, oh, should have updated. I don't know why I did it that time. <laughs> um, but hey, it's yeah, it's false, which means uh, it wasn't an A. So let's go back up here and let's let's delete this assignment because this one I know is an A. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to save that again, and then I'm going to call. Yep, true, A. So what that just found out was that the assignment that was missing was an A. So, and it should have updated that. Yep, see, it updated that, which is awesome. So it included the, the new assignment that's an A, and it threw it on there. Um, and at this point, it basically called my serial function, which is, I apologize. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I've commented out now, so it didn't have to do all the Arduino stuff. But this is basically telling the Arduino, yep, go ahead and do the animation. So that's basically the rundown of this. Um, if you want to go through my file or go through the kind of the nitty gritty of this, um, of, my, of my file, you're welcome to. As always, it'll be posted on the uh, Element 14 community. And that's, that's basically it here.
I absolutely love this project. And while the Canvas API was definitely challenging to say the least, I really like what I've done here. <laughs> I really like that it's just going to go off anytime during the day based on when I have it set to run that program. However, this is definitely a little concerning in that it might go off at like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. If, if, you know, if teachers late, late night grading, um, which maybe will be a little concerning, but <laughs> we can always adjust that when the program will run. Um, but I just really like how it all came together here. So if you've ever worked on a project with an API or maybe something where you pull the party popper, maybe some music, some celebration music, let me know at the Element 14 community. We'll see you next time.